Shalom, lit parents. Today, our lesson is titled Facing the Giants. We're going to be using a lesson plan that was modified from the Bible Pathway Adventure lesson plan, starting with lesson three. We're doing this for this lesson because we've already covered the majority of the content from lessons one and two. The lesson objectives for today's lesson are that children will learn the importance of trusting Yah, children will be able to tell the Hebrew definition of the word for trust, and children will identify three Hebrew letters. There is an additional portion at the end, that is optional, where I will deal with what it means to be confident in Yah and how King David found his confidence. That portion will correspond with a portion of our lesson plan that deals with message. We'll finish with a memory verse, we'll recap and look at some activities that we can do, and then we'll close with prayer. I'm so excited to share in this journey of educating the children in Torah. Shabbat Shalom. Yisrael, Yahuwah, Eloheinu, Yahuwah, Echad, Vahavta, Et, Yahuwah, Eloheha, Beho, Levavcha, Uvho, Nafshecha, Uvho, Meldecha. The earth is Yahuwah's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of Yahuwah? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Yahuwah, and righteousness from the Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Yahuwah strong and mighty, Yahuwah mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Yahuwah of hosts. He is the King of glory. Shalom, Yoadim. This week, we're going to learn about fighting giants. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been dealing with children or young adults who have been called to minister before Yahuwah. We started with Samuel, who was a prophet and a seer and a priest before Yahuwah, and he served in the temple under Eli. Next, we learned about how Samuel anointed King David and how King David was put in place to become the next king of Israel. One of the things we didn't cover, which we'll go over briefly, is how the first king, King Saul, went crooked and was removed from being king over Israel. King Saul was the first king of Israel and he was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was chosen by the people and he was approved of by Yahuwah to lead the people into battle. Yahuwah calls him a captain over his army. King Saul disobeyed Yah when he failed to complete the instruction that Yah had given him. 
Previously, we talked about how Yah is so much more concerned with obedience than sacrifice. King Saul decided to keep the spoils of the Amalekites and spare King Agag. And he decided to take of a portion of those spoils and to make a sacrifice unto Yah. This was something that did not please Yah. And because of this, Samuel was given the very, very heartbreaking task of telling King Saul that the kingdom had been rent from him. But Yah is always faithful. He had already prepared for himself a king that would lead the people righteously and do his will. King David is said to be a king after Yah's own heart. Samuel goes and he anoints King David and it is the beginning of a wonderful journey between Yah and King David. Today we're gonna learn about King David and his wonderful, wonderful understanding of the heart of Yah and how much he trusted in the promises that had been set forth. Today, the title of our story is Facing the Giant. The illustrations of this story and the storyline is brought to you by Bible Pathway Adventures. Mighty Philistine armies sharpened their swords. Nobody liked the Philistines. Mm -mm. They were mean and cruel, and they liked a good fight. Saul knew the Philistines hated the Israelites, and it made him nervous. He gathered his soldiers together and quickly prepared for battle. The Israelites didn't know it yet, but the Philistines had a fearsome warrior on their side. His name was Goliath and he was as tall as a house. Everyone feared him and nobody came near him. Goliath knew he was stronger than any man in Israel. Why are you here, you tiny Israelites? Roared Goliath, flexing his bulging muscles. If you dare. Pick one of your men to fight me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. But <laughs> if I win, you will be our slaves. Saul and his men shook with fear. They weren't used to fighting anyone as big as Goliath. Even the ground trembled when he walked. Meanwhile, in Bethlehem, Jesse told David to visit his brothers who were soldiers in Saul's army. Take this bread and cheese and go to the Elah Valley, he said. Find out if your brothers are well and then come back and tell me. Early the next morning, David jumped out of bed, grabbed the sack of food and set out to do as his father had ordered. He arrived at the edge of the camp just as the soldiers were marching out to battle. David dropped his sack and raced to the battle line to greet his three brothers. He had never been so close to the enemy, and he was excited. He folded his arms and glared at the Philistines. How dare they try to destroy the Israelites? Why are you lined up for battle? Goliath snarled, baring his teeth. He'd been threatening the Israelites for 40 days, and he was growing impatient. Come and fight me, you cowards. The Israelites should have been used to hearing Goliath's threats, but they were still terrified. Even King Saul's knees knocked with fear. That giant is a monster! The soldiers cried, running back to the camp. If we could only kill him, we could get the reward the king promised. David turned to stare at the soldiers. What's the reward for killing Goliath? He asked. Besides, who is this Philistine that he dares to challenge the army of the living Yah? The soldiers told him about Goliath's challenge. Then they told him what Saul had promised to the man who killed Goliath. The king will give you his daughter to marry and will treat your family well. David smiled. He liked the sound of the king's reward. Why are you here, you wimp? said Eliab, poking David in the chest with his spear. 
You should be taking care of the sheep. You're not a warrior. You've only come to watch the fighting. What have I done now? Asked David, turning back to the soldiers. I only asked a question. He ignored his older brother and continued talking with the men. In his heart, he wanted to help save Israel from the Philistines. When King Saul heard about David's bravery, he called David before him. David told the king, No one should be afraid of this Philistine. I will go and fight him. How can you fight him? replied Saul, looking David up and down. He's a great warrior, and you, you're only a young boy. I have killed lions and bears to protect my father's sheep, said David. God will help me kill this giant too. Just wait and see. King Saul sighed and scratched his beard. He wasn't sure how to deal with Goliath. Could David be the answer? Part 3 Okay, Saul finally said to David, Go, fight the giant, and may our God be with you. He put a bronze helmet on David's head and gave him a coat of armor to wear. David's heart pumped a little faster. He grabbed a spear and walked towards the battlefield, but he didn't get very far. I, I can't wear all this armor. It's too big and heavy. He ripped off the bronze helmet and gave the armor back to Saul. Don't worry, I have another plan. David knew that Goliath had four nasty sons. Holding his shepherd's stick, he picked five smooth stones from a nearby stream and shoved them in his pocket. Now he was ready for battle. With his sling in his hand, David strolled towards Goliath. Goliath had waited for 40 days, and oh, he was ready to fight. Am I a mad dog? Is that why you're carrying a stick? <laughs> Laughed Goliath. Why don't you Israelites give me a real soldier to fight? David slowly twirled his empty sling and waited. Come closer, he challenged David. I'll give your body to the birds and animals to eat. David looked Goliath straight in the eye. You come against me with a sword and a spear, said David. But you don't scare me. I come against you in the name of the Lord, the God of this army. Goliath nearly choked. How dare this Israelite boy threaten him? But David hadn't finished. Today, yeah. we'll hand you over to me. I'm going to kill you and give the bodies of the Philistines to the birds and animals. Then the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. Goliath had heard enough. He raised his spear and stomped towards David. Clouds of dust rose with each step the giant made. But David wasn't afraid. He grabbed a stone from his bag, put it in his sling, and swung it above his head. <sighs> David aimed at the giant and let it fly. The stone whizzed through the air like a rocket and smacked Goliath in the middle of his huge, hairy forehead. <sighs> Goliath stumbled forward and crashed to the ground. David had killed the mighty Philistine with just a sling and a stone. The soldiers stood and stared in astonishment. They couldn't believe the young shepherd had just killed their great giant. David stood over his enemy. Now, do you believe me? He said, looking down at Goliath's limp body. He pulled out the Philistine's sword and chopped off his head. God has given Goliath into our hands. The Israelite army cheered. When the Philistines saw their hero was dead, they turned and ran away as fast as they could, but the Israelites didn't let them escape so easily. They grabbed their weapons and chased the Philistine soldiers all the way back to their homes. 
David hadn't forgotten about Goliath's head. He tucked it under his arm and carried it back to Jerusalem. Saul was very pleased with David. From now on, you work for me, he said, placing a hand on David's shoulder. You're a soldier, not a shepherd. Israel sang, and danced, and played their tambourines. This victory proved God was with them. They had defeated the mighty Philistines. Before we begin our lesson, we're going to learn a new Hebrew word. For those of you that may not know Hebrew, we're going to use a very, very simple method in order to get us all on the same page. The word we're going to look at today is the word trust. This simple method is the method of using the pictograph form or the ancient picture form so that we can all understand what these words mean. As we progress through our lessons, we'll incorporate or we'll add in the other forms of Hebrew. But for now, since we're starting out, we're gonna use the pictures that we can see and experience with our eyes. These pictures are things that are part of your everyday life. So don't be alarmed if it's something that looks a little strange because we're gonna explain it. Betach, betach. The word is spelled bet, tet, chet. The bet is a house, or a tent, or to be inside. The picture you see may look a little different than some of the letters you may be being taught at home, because these pictures are actually pictures of what things would have looked like to the Hebrew ancestors. A bet is a house, and that picture is what a house would have looked like if you were big like Yah and you were standing over it, it looks like a floor plan. A floor plan is kind of how a house is laid out. The second picture that you'll see is the Hebrew letter Tet. It looks like a circle with an X in it. This would represent a basket or to surround or for something to be coiled up, kind of like a snake. This word literally tells us about something that protects or surrounds. The next picture you see, you're right, it does look just like a fence. And that's exactly what it is in Hebrew. A het is a fence or a wall of separation. It's a thing that keeps one thing away from something else. So in a very, very simple sense, the word bata that we translated as trust literally means the house or that very, very important part of the Hebrew community, the village, the people, who are surrounded and separated so that they're secure and safe. And can you take a guess at what's surrounding them and keeping them safe? That's right, Yah. Yah had put himself around Israel so that he could protect them and keep them safe from their enemies as they went through and established themselves in the Promised Land. In our story today, we'll see the trust of King David. And so I wanna make something very clear. There's a difference between being confident in the words of Yah and being arrogant. Some people have read the story and misunderstood King David's confidence as arrogant. And this could definitely be confusing because even his own brothers thought that he came out to battle to show off. So today for you all, I wanna clear up where King David's confidence comes from. Remember earlier we spoke about the fact that King David was a man or a young man or a yelled after Yah's own heart. How do we know this? Is this something that we just hear all the time and so we just believe it? Or is it something we can verify? 
In our last lesson, we learned the Hebrew word lev. We learned that lev was the authority within. It was the thing that draws us and causes us to follow after Yah and his word. Well, when King David went out and his brothers made fun of him because he was so confident, he was not confident in himself or in his own power, but he was confident in a truth that he knew from Torah. Our confidence as young men and young women who have a heart for Yah comes from Yah's word. We're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 20 verses 1 through 4 to see how such a young boy could have the confidence and know that he could beat such a big giant. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 says, When you go out to battle against your enemies, and you see horses and chariots and people bigger than you, be not afraid of them. For Yahuwah your Elohim, who brought you out of Egypt, is here for you. And it shall be, when you come close to them in battle, that the priests will approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day to battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, and don't be terrified because of them. For Yahuwah your Elohim is he who goes with you to fight for you and against your enemies to save you. From what we just read, can you see how that would make you so confident? If Yah told you that all you had to do was trust in him and he would defeat all your enemies, do you think that you could have the same confidence as King David? This week's memory verse is from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid, nor be scared of them. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, he goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Wow, that was fun. I hope you guys had a great time today and that you learned something about trusting in Yah and how we can depend and know that he's going to follow through for us. If you're interested in additional activities, go to BiblePathways.com and check out some of the cool activities they have for this lesson. Until next week, may the Most High keep you, bless you, and may His face shine upon you. And always remember that living in Torah is lit. This little light of mine, light of mine, light of mine.